All right, so this video is about the machines of Antarctica. Um, here at McMurdo Station, there are a lot of different machines and vehicles that we get to use just because of the region we're in, uh, because of being in a polar climate with like no roads, snow, and just being plain in the middle of nowhere. Uh, there's a lot of vehicles that we had developed specifically just for these kind of environments. And some, some of these vehicles are actually unique to Antarctica completely because they're custom built for this place. So there are four vehicles that uh, I'm going to focus on in this video, and those are the passenger vehicles. So the four vehicles are uh, Ford 4x4 van, uh, the Delta, uh, Ivan the Terabus, and then the passenger crest. So those are the four I'm going to go over today. Uh, all very unique and built to order for polar regions such as McMurdo Station where I'm living. Uh, first off, we're going to go start with the 4x4 van. It is stocked with some beefy tires. The van is a, the daily commuter. It holds 14 passengers and everyone is trained on it. Most people on the station get trained to use this vehicle if they need to go anywhere. They are the most agile and efficient way to get almost anywhere here, I would say. I use these daily driving out to like the long duration balloon sites as well as Phoenix and Williams airfields. Uh, we go there every single day. There's just regular taxi roads to those places. Um, they make it through most water and snow, which is pretty good with a four x four vehicle. It can probably get through maybe two feet of water or snow if we're lucky, but these vehicles do get uh, stuck pretty frequently. It's not like they're uh, foolproof. They will get stuck every once in a while in the conditions that we're driving in. But for the most part, this is the most normal vehicle we drive. And 90% of the time, it's good enough, does the trick. But the next vehicle we have coming up here is definitely a bit different and unique, and that is going to be the Delta. So it holds up to 20 people in the back and then about three people up in the front with you in the cab. It is articulated in the middle, and because of that, it can make super tight turns, and it's surprisingly simple to drive. There are four or five gears, depending on the year and model of the Delta, but most of them here are very old, like 40 to 50 years old, but they can run just about anything. The Delta is extremely heavy and robust, but with little shock to dampen bumps for the driver, as well as the passenger compartment, you're basically feeling absolutely everything. It is not uncommon to actually hit a bump and then hit your head on the ceiling. And actually it's funny, they actually have a padded ceiling for the driver at least. Unfortunately not in the back. They have Terra tires on them. Uh, so these tires are said to be able to go through four feet of water and continue to drive through four feet of water. I don't know if we've completely tested it, but we've probably got about three feet or so. Every once in a while and this made it through pretty easily. So when like the transition, that section of the and then the Ross Sea, where it meets the island, turns into a swamp. But Delta is running sweet. The Delta has got you covered. It's never gotten stuck there when we were driving, at least this year. That vehicle is built by Foremost, which is out of Canada, and they actually make vehicles for polar regions up north, as well as just places in different parts of like northern Canada. Um, number three is Ivan the Terabus. Ivan has the same Terra tires that the Deltas have, but it is in the shape of a bus and it can hold a lot more people. It holds, I think, 50 to 55 passengers in there, and they're used for generally larger flight days in the beginning and the end of the season. Still extremely heavy duty, uh, but thankfully it does better with bumps. It has a little bit of shock at least, a little better for people, uh, but just a little, not much. You still bounce quite a bit. Ivan is probably the most iconic vehicle uh, seen uh, at McMurdo Station. Everyone knows it. Everyone gets excited to ride on it when they see it pulling up to the C-17 in the beginning of the season because they've heard of it. But Ivan is like, you know, limping through things. It's getting old. Antarctica ages things faster than it should anyway. It's only like 30 years old, but it's starting to struggle. The craziest thing is, like, check out these controls here. So you see that tape there? That is holding down an engine override switch. You have to have that engine override switch down the entire ride. I'll show you here. It's gonna just die on you. It's just because that engine override switch is not depressed. So now I'll put it back. So push that in, tape this as good as possible. Let's start it back up here. Boom, and Ivan is roaring again. 
I literally drove him yesterday, so don't worry, he's still being used. But he's definitely showing his age. And he's kind of slow, but he makes it to 25. Uh, that being said, uh, there is no speedometer, so... You can see that right there. Um, so the fourth vehicle I'm going to talk about is the Passenger Crest. This is definitely my favorite vehicle uh, that I get to drive here, and it is the largest vehicle on the continent. It is 103 feet long, and you can feel it on the roads here. You're just like snaking along the roads. It's really fun to drive, surprisingly easy to drive. Um, just have to be careful about your length and try to pass other vehicles on the snow roads and stuff. Um, it is custom built for Antarctica, so that means there's not another one like this on the planet. And there are two passenger compartments on there. There's the little one right behind the articulated uh, front, and that holds five passengers. And then uh, the back holds 55 passengers. Uh, the vehicle is similar to de the Delta in the way that it is articulated, but then it does have that larger trailer in the back uh, that it's also pulling. So it's like snaking along uh, these roads. The Crest is already overloaded due to this custom passenger cabin. Even without passengers on it, it's already overloaded. So you're driving over the working load limit. Uh, so you're driving really slow, partially because it can't go any faster because it's just working too hard just to keep going and partly because you just don't want to like work wear out the brakes and it's pretty crazy because there's actually no air brakes on this thing which doesn't make sense to me but uh the tires are even larger than deltas and ivans so this literally can go through anything i don't think it's possible to get this thing stuck in any conditions that we're seeing down here it goes right through the transition when there's a swamp and you kind of don't have to worry you're just kind of like driving through water and you're totally fine. It is easily the coolest passenger vehicle in Antarctica, in my opinion. It's my total favorite. It's, I get to choose what I drive that day. I'm driving the passenger crest. It's pretty sweet. So those are the main four uh, passenger vehicles that we drive here. Um, and aside from these vehicles, there are a ton of other ones. Um, there are a lot of strange vehicles here. There is the Haglin, Piston Bully, uh, the Mack Tracks, Loaders, Dump Trucks, the fire truck is really unique and strange. Tons of heavy equipment that I couldn't name if I wanted to. And then there's this strange vehicle called the Boss, and that's what launches the long duration balloons from the NASA facility out on the sea ice. It's pretty crazy looking. Definitely probably only one or two of those in the world, I would think. Um, but I'll have to save those for another day. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I will see you in the next video. See ya.